place like PFF had Makai, and they still do, uh, outside the top five. They had a second, third round grade on him. Uh, and all of a sudden the combine happens and, you know, he runs that sub 540 and he's just an athletic freak and he kind of became a darling of the combine. Uh, so what I want to ask you first is, have you been surprised by his, his, his rise or did you kind of just figure it was only a matter of time before he became a national story? Yeah, no, I, I, I did think he would become a national story. I didn't think it'd be like this. I didn't think people would be thinking about him going forward at the Giants. Um, and I talked to uh, Dane Brugler from The Athletic back in, I think, end of October for I was doing a profile on Makai, and he had him as a top 60 prospect. And I talked to Dane a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, man, it's just shocked that he's out the top 10. I just I think people saw how powerful he is, and he got better as the season went on. I think he absolutely was tremendous against Clemson. That helped him a lot. Uh, was dom absolutely dominant against Syracuse, which was his last home game. Um, I, I, I just think people saw how dominant he was. Then he goes to the combine and runs a 5-1. There's not many six, seven, three hundred sixty-pound people you see run that way. Um, I think once that happened, it was sealed. I even actually I just got off the phone with him before, with with him before I talked to you, and I asked him if he expected this, and he thought he was late first day, early second, like coming into the season. Um, he never expected to blow up like this, but I think when you missed his size and his power um, and his personality is very physical. He wants to be dominant. He wants to he wants to throw the person that crosses him on the ground. Um, you mix that with his athleticism, it's hard to see him outside the top 10 or even top 15 if he somehow falls that far. What were your takeaways from what you just talked with Makai? You mentioned how you guys hadn't touched base in a, a couple months. How is he doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's excited, I, obviously, for good reason. Um, yeah. I think he, he obviously wanted to walk across the stage, but obviously with everything going on with the pandemic, he can't. Um, he's down in Dallas with his family, um, which is where he worked out with Duke Mayweather and worked a lot. I think a lot of people – when they talk, you heard experts say it, analysts, even scouts have told him maybe his one weakness is sometimes his hands aren't where they need to be or his techniques off. They've done a lot of work on that this offseason. Um, and just, he just, I think more than anything, he said it over and over and over again. I just want to play football. I just, I'm just ready to play football. And uh, this is a kid who works really, really hard all the time. Um, he wants to be dominant. I think I asked him what he wants to, I guess, what he wants to show when he gets to camp in the summer. He just, said one word, dominate. And that's, I mean, there's no better way to describe him than that, than that word. That's how he is all the time. You mentioned his, a weakness with his hands. Um, anything else, any other, you worry about him being a, a top 10 pick where he's it's headed? If you had to pick any other weaknesses, do you see any? No, I mean, he's an absolute dominant run blocker. I mean, Louisville, when they needed yards, they just ran to him. They just said run left. And it was, it didn't be a matter if it's outside zone or inside zone. He was, he's throwing people on the ground. There were times where they would pull him when they needed to, or they would shift them inside, just a different kind of alignments to go behind them. Um, it's a very underrated pass blocker. I think that's something a lot of people kind of say about him is that sometimes that's a weakness, but I don't really see that. I think he's given up. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, maybe three sacks his whole career. I don't think he gave up a sack last year. If it was, it was one, um, which is pretty impressive. Um, now, and then Louisville ran a lot of play action, a lot of RPO type deals, but I mean, they threw the ball deep a lot. Um, and I think when you're the left tackle, your quarterback has to trust that you're going to hold that, hold that edge. Um, Makai did that over and over and over again against some really good competition last year. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I think if he cleans up that technique a little bit more, uh, I think the sky's the limit for Makai. I really do. I love it. I think he fits perfectly. He's a dominant run blocker. I think that's perfect for what you want with Nick Chubb and Cream Hunt. I think he, if you want, if you want to run play action a little bit more with Baker, I think Makai's built for that. Um, he's also built for if you want him to step back and drop back. I, I think Makai is just – I think he has the potential to be an all-pro for a long time. Um, his just, he just has – his upside is just so much more than I think some of these other tackles in the draft. Bronze fans are hearing it from the source right here with Cameron Teague. The carrier